Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the moon. I'm your host for this evening, Lawrence Ray, and I'm joined today by my fantastic co-host, Ricardo Martinez. Uh, but also we have a awesome guest today. We're interviewing CK Snarks, Christian, uh, general manager um, of the Bitcoin magazine and the Bitcoin conference. Uh, both come hand in hand. How are you doing today? Doing fantastic. How are you doing? Glad to hear it. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm good, man. I'm good. Thanks. Yep. Just a uh, couple of days into COVID, uh, but you guys listening probably can't tell because uh, it's not hitting that badly. Smooth and clear, man. You sound fantastic. Buttery smooth. Thank you very much, sir. That's, uh, that's kind of you. Uh, but yeah, I guess to kick us off, I, I, I wanted to uh, just ask you quickly, really, uh, how, when it comes to obviously your role at Bitcoin Magazine uh, and obviously the the conference as well. Uh, you came in early 2018 to Bitcoin Magazine, uh, I believe. Could be wrong. Uh, what's the story behind that? Because obviously, you know, you've kind of it's quite. Um, I guess it's quite a big thing to kind of just come straight into Bitcoin Magazine as your first like crypto Bitcoin job, and then obviously you've worked your way up within what four years. What's the story behind all this? Like, I want to hear what happened and how you ended up doing this. Basically, what got you here? No, I mean. Uh... Great question. Uh, I've gotten kind of good at telling my my Bitcoin and Bitcoin career story, uh, but pretty much during 2017, during that run up to 20K, that's the first time that Bitcoin really caught my attention and I actually did some due diligence. Um, I uh, ended up you know, listening to hours and hours and hours of crypto and then Bitcoin podcasts and kind of in the span of discovering Bitcoin in October, of 2017 uh, and then like onboarding uh, through uh, November, uh, I kind of like quickly observed that, you know, Bitcoin's the real signal here. Uh, I was really capable of seeing through kind of the ICO craze, initial coin offering craze at the time, because I was working in Silicon Valley for what I would characterize as shitty startups. Uh, and I saw what it looked like to raise money in Silicon Valley. And I just really quickly identified that a lot of these ICO projects were shitty startups that were raising orders of magnitude more than they should. Started to say like, what's like Google, literally Googling what's wrong with ICOs, what's wrong with blockchain. The only people that were coming up were just complete haters on the space and then Bitcoin maximalists. Uh, so Bitcoin maximalists like uh, Tone Vase, uh, Jimmy Song, Ansel Lindner. Um, I Vortex, I started listening to a lot of their content um, and that uh, really kind of set me on the course uh, to really appreciate, you know, Bitcoin specifically. Um, two weeks before Christmas, which is pretty much at the top of the 2017 bull market, like you can, when you guys can go back and look at the chart right now, if you look up like, you know, two weeks before Christmas, so that would be... Um, Oh, that be that would be uh, December. December. God, I can't do math right now. Eleventh. Uh, so uh, December eleventh. Uh, around there, I put in my two weeks uh, for work and I quit my job with absolutely no plan. Uh, so if you look at the chart, that is like within five days of like the top. So I quit my job at the actual Bitcoin top. Uh, I'm pretty sure all my coworkers were laughing at me for the subsequent months, uh, but I went to. Miami to the North American Bitcoin conference. Uh, it was hilarious. I, I would call it the North American shitcoin conference, but there was like banana coin posters and radiology chain and like just all kinds of just lunacy. But out of all of that, there was the Bitcoin magazine booth. Uh, I went over there, I immediately recognized the brand. Uh, I shook uh, everyone's hand. I said, what's up? My name's Christian. You know, I like Bitcoin. I live in San Francisco. I do sales. Uh, I got the CRO's card uh, and I proceeded to just hound him until he gave me a, a sales job. So I got that sales job uh, like mid-February. So it didn't take me that long to get a job in the space. Uh, and then from there, it's just been a journey uh, at BTC Inc. Uh, it's just an absolutely incredible company uh, with uh, an incredible founder, David Bailey, who has a really strong vision for Bitcoin and how uh, Bitcoin reaches the masses and how Bitcoin adoption, uh, you know, continues to move forward and the possibilities of Bitcoin as a global money. You know, he's already thinking about 
what happens after hyper Bitcoinization. So he's really inspiring. And through 2018 and 2019, as a company, we went from being like a multi coin company. We had like an event series called Distributed. We were involved in like ICOs in China and all this kind of stuff. And we just dumped all of that and we focused only on Bitcoin. So Bitcoin Magazine launching the Bitcoin conference. Uh, and I was a part of the conference team. So, you know, chugged along doing conferences, put on Bitcoin 2019, which was amazing, working on Bitcoin 2020. You know, it, it's in the history books that Bitcoin 2020 never happened. Uh, two weeks before it got canceled due to COVID restrictions and fears and stuff like that that were happening in the world. Everyone was kind of like in a panic. Uh, but, you know, we, we, we put all of our operating cash into these events. You know, we really, uh, we, we really go hard into the paint, especially in those early days when uh, the event was smaller. Uh, it was like life or death by the success of these events. So when you have Bitcoin 2020 canceled, you know, that's a tough time for a company. Um, really, we got down to the smallest our company could be. And that's when I flipped from, uh, you know, doing sales strictly to doing more like uh, management, team management, content creation, working on the Bitcoin magazine side. Uh, and then from there, like, honestly, we just kept building, you know, we, we, we gritted through that time. Uh, we found ways to, uh, you know, continue to get capital and to continue to get cash flow. Uh, and uh, we kept the brand alive. And, you know, fast forward to uh, 2021, we moved the Bitcoin conference to Miami. And uh, Bitcoin 2021 was an absolutely massive success. That's where Elsa, uh, President Bukele announced that he was going to pursue making the Bitcoin law, which ended up going into law and now is in, in, in practice in El Salvador. And that is the first country to adopt Bitcoin officially as legal tender. Um, and, you know, we pulled off Bitcoin 2022. Uh, and, you know, I find myself as the general manager adjacent to the president and reporting to the CEO um, of the entire business. So um, I think, you know, my story would say like, you know, find a company that you're passionate about, go all in, you know, stick through the bear market, which is upon us uh, here in uh, 2022. Uh, and then, you know, if you just grind hard on the other end, there's endless possibilities, especially if the company and the business is Bitcoin focused and, uh, and, and there's product market fit. Stick to the vision. I like it. That's a, uh, no, yeah, it's a, it's a good message uh, for anyone out there listening. If you believe and you want to, you want to go towards something, then keep pushing in that direction probably it's going to work out okay <laughs> probably um yeah like <laughs> it takes dedication though so like dedication is hard work plus like patience and and like sticking to it so uh the dedication pays off at the end of the you know even just one cycle in that you know i think that works for hodlers that works for builders so it, it's necessary i i like bitcoin magazine i think um it's one of the better uh, publications uh, what made you guys like kind of ditch the whole multi-coin thing and focus on Bitcoin, um, unlike other publications like CoinDesk or Cointelegraph? I think in late 2018, we had a like come to Jesus moment where it's like, hey, we're not differentiated. Like we've strayed from our roots. You know, I think what's always put Bitcoin Magazine on the map was a Bitcoin focus. Um, and, you know, we were really prominent and competitive during, you know, covering the block size wars and really like just educating people about Bitcoin. And it wasn't like, you know, I, I, I feel like the world, like this idea of like Bitcoin only and Bitcoin maximalism, like that has really evolved over time. So it's not like we were like, hey, we're straying from our roots by covering up the other cryptocurrencies. It's just like, First, the cryptocurrency space was only Bitcoin, and then it started adding other things. And we're like, hey, we're covering the space. It took some time for us to realize, hey, actually, we've strayed, identify that. And then two, there's this massive market opportunity, which is acknowledging that Bitcoin's the only signal, ignoring the noise, and focusing on Bitcoin. So at the time, 100% of our market competition was multi-coin and 0% of our market competition other than podcasters and independent content creators were really expressing the thesis that, you know, 80% of 90% of the company already believed in, which was that Bitcoin is the actual signal here and we should just focus on Bitcoin. So once we like made that realization, 
And then, you know, I think that was pretty early for a business. Now we are really seeing a lot of Bitcoin only businesses that are, you know, doing really well because of that distinction. But, you know, at the time, like, you know, there's very few businesses that um, had made that like kind of business thesis and actually took it to practice. So uh, once we made that and acknowledged that decision, things actually started getting way easier because we could, again, we were aligned with what we believed, but we could actually now differentiate because like, hey, you know, maybe we're not as fast as Coindesk about, you know, pumping out the biggest like, you know, news story about an ICO, but we're way better than all, you know, wh- name it about talking about Bitcoin and what's important in Bitcoin and, and talk, speaking to an audience that can already see through the noise, right? Uh, so it, it tur- we, I think it turned, we, we found a way to uh, lean in on Bitcoin and that kind of gave us an advantage in the marketplace. And we just have gone, we've continued to double, triple down on that sense. Um, and it's hilarious. No one is still really going after this market. You know, I mean, obviously there's a lot of amazing content creators that are working with companies. Uh, there are now a few different Bitcoin you know, publications are only focused on Bitcoin, but none of the larger players have changed their strategy. A- any of the, all the ones that were already there and were doing a multi-coin strategy, they're continuing and they're actually doubling down further. They're actually moving away from Bitcoin even more. Uh, so I don't know if any of y'all are going to be um, at the event happening in Austin later today, but like, do they even talk about Bitcoin at all in their marketing? I, I, I think, I don't think so. I've seen, I think, is it consensus coverage one it is, but I don't see much. Yeah, I've heard people saying they're going, but I don't actually know. I don't really know what it's actually about. Is it more Ethereum based? I think I'm not, not entirely certain. Um, hey, you can get some desk coin. <laughs> sounds good to me. No, I, I haven't yeah. been paying any attention so, to that sort of stuff. Um, so I wouldn't know, to be fair. Um, but I guess, um, have you, because obviously you said that at a time in, when was it, in 2020, when obviously the COVID happened, messed up the plans for the conference, uh, decreased the size. I mean, you know, you went through a period where it was like, hey, we've got to, you know, adapt to survive. Was there, were, were there any times then or even since then where people have gone like, hey, you know, maybe we should go back to doing altcoin, shitcoin stuff? Like, has anyone ever questioned it since then? Or has it always just been like, boom, Bitcoin only straight ahead, that's it, no matter what kind of thing? Yeah, no, no one's questioned. And honestly, like, it's made things so much easier because, you know, whoever didn't believe in that, they, you know, they went their own way. They found other opportunities that they preferred um, over time. And the people who were into it were into it. And then on top of that, we kept on hiring more Bitcoiners. So one of the best things that we that we've done is it's I would say it's not 100 percent strict policy, but it's, you know, the way that we view hiring is like, here's the job, like, you know, podcast editor, you know, are you a podcast editor and what's your competency on that skill set? And then what's your competency on the subject matter expertise around Bitcoin, right? And we weigh those, this, we actually weigh those the same. So like, if you're an editor, that's the best editor ever, but you have zero Bitcoin subject matter expertise, and then there's an editor that's a little bit worse, maybe on their exact skill set, but has an enormous amount of Bitcoin subject expertise. They might actually stack up pretty well. And we might actually consider the, the weaker editor who's a Bitcoiner. Um, and I can go into multiple reasons why we actually do that calculation that way. But um, long story short is we just kept hiring more and more Bitcoiners. So, yeah, of course, we wouldn't question that. And we're just, you know whatever internally we're creating an echo chamber where we don't care about the altcoins i think we're having intelligent conversation on like you know now altcoins are starting to adopt bitcoin it's kind of hilarious to watch that uh which again shows the difference like bitcoin is actually commodity internet money and these altcoins are communities companies startups something else uh so like how do we cover that like because that actually is kind of relevant to bitcoin so we're trying to like you know figure out like what's the appropriate editorial of uh, voice uh, to express in regards to uh, shit coins adopting Bitcoin. But um, beyond that, you know, we're just focused on Bitcoin. Like that is the signal. I don't think that it's a very disputable thing. I think there's a lot of uh, very fundamental uh, type of indicators and re- <clears throat> rationales uh, onto why Bitcoin is the signal and why it is a good business calculation to focus on the signal and ignore the noise.
one of the things I really like about Bitcoin Magazine's content is that you guys are not scared of taking deep dives into like technical uh, aspects of Bitcoin or, um, you know, things like censorship resistance, like topics that are really important to Bitcoiners. Who's responsible for like that direction in your guys' content? I mean, that's that's at the core of what we do. Like when we made the conscious decision to focus on Bitcoin, we acknowledge like, hey, there is an audience that is the most influential audience in the space. That's the Bitcoin maximalists, the hardcore committed uh, thought leaders and uh, and subject matter experts and the people enthusiasts who spend all their time learning about Bitcoin. So that's our foundation. We have to speak to and be respected by those people first before we can authoritatively, you know, move up the funnel. Um, so, you know, it was, you know, Aaron Van Wordham talking about the, the blockchain uh, or the, the Bitcoin block size war and documenting that and doing real journalism and talking to real developers and, and making it understandable for a more lay audience. Um, like that's at our roots. So um, it really was just go, go back to our roots and like, you know, and, and uh, double down on that. And, you know, that's helped us hire people that appreciate that. Pete Rizzo and Amcios uh, are two to, you know, I, that come off the top of my head. Uh, and then they've just continued to build amazing stuff. Uh, Econo Alchemist, he's a, a fantastic contributor that works with us. Uh, he puts out the deepest, the deepest, most thorough privacy uh, and Bitcoin user guides out there. So, um, you know, we're going to continue investing in that kind of content too. And again, no one else is like literally no one else with a, with a large, you know, uh, website or Twitter profile is doing this. Like it's unbelievable. There's only upstarts in us. So, um, Sure. Uh, we'll keep picking up the low-hanging fruit. Thanks. Rizzo's uh, recent article with Safedine was incredible. I, I enjoyed that. It was a thoroughly interesting read. Rizzo is, a, is just an absolute stud. So I don't know what else to say. Uh, potentially genius status. So Some high praise. It sounds like you guys need some uh, competitors. Uh, it sounds like you're asking for competitors right now. Which is, I uh, mean... <laughs> I'm not asking for it, but it, it's unbelievable that we, it hasn't really emerged yet. No, I gotcha. And um, yeah, I guess it is interesting because it's been, yeah, it's been what, 2018. So four, four years or so since the change was decided to go like fully Bitcoin. Because obviously Bitcoin magazines had quite a lot of development over the years. Like it was started by two guys who went and found Ethereum, right? So like, it's kind of like, it's kind of weird how it's like adapted and it's, it's interesting to see how it's gone. But I think it's, well, it looks like it's definitely gone in the right path um because as a as a name the brand name has like very good reputation